Cool. So, hi everyone. I'm Swizzets. I want to, before I begin, I want to ask you a question. Who has a lot of money in Bitcoin or something like that? Raise your hands. Awesome. No crazy people here. Yes. That's good. That's the first one I was thinking. Uh, I don't put your that. money in crypto. It's, uh -huh. There's a conference in San Francisco called Tulip 2018, and I think there's a reason it's called the Tulip. Uh, it's because of that Dutch thing in the, I don't know which century. Oh, it works. So I'm Swizzets. I I'm from Slovenia. I live in San Francisco right now. And kind of my role in life is to help you become a better software engineer. Uh, normally, I'm a software engineer. I write books, uh, things like that. You can find all of that on the internet. And that behind on the screen is me doing my Learn While You Poop series, which you can talk, ask me about later. And today, uh, this doesn't actually work very well to switch slides. OK. Keyboard. So today I want to talk to you about a crazy idea of mine, because that is part of helping you become a better software engineer, is sometimes exploring these crazy ideas that expand our horizons and hopefully teach us something new. That sounds very bullshitty, but here we go. I'm, I want to start with a story. It was a warm, cozy December night somewhere in San Francisco at the peak of the blockchain craze, when I think Bitcoin was around $20,000 or something crazy like that, it was the first time that my normal friends were asking me, hey, do you, do you know what the blockchain is? Like, how does that work? What is it? And that's when you know that everything's going to shit. And obviously, in January, it all collapsed. And blockchain isn't that interesting anymore. But it's still pretty interesting. And I was hanging out on Telegram on that December night, as one does. And we were talking about whether blockchain is or isn't the future. And I think personally that it's something like the web was in 1995. It kind of seems like the nerds have some really interesting idea and they're kind of working on this stuff at night or in their spare time. And norm normal people are kind of smelling something there. But it's probably not going to be anything or it could be the next big thing. It doesn't matter. But we started talking about Redux. Who knows what Redux is? Awesome. So we were talking about Redux and about how it's useful for making web apps and how it can help you and be awesome. And we were talking about this while we were talking about blockchain. And I had this, uh, this idea that maybe we could put blockchains and Redux together, and we could maybe use Redux to build custom blockchains for particular apps and store our state that way. So, Let's backtrack a little bit. What's, uh, what's a blockchain? Like, who here has actually read the original blockchain paper from that dude? A couple of you? OK. So a blockchain is it's more than just crypto and cryptocurrencies and all this, this wild speculation and selling bits for money and all of that. It's actually a really good, uh, it's actually a really good data structure. It's essentially what you would call a verified reversed linked list. If you remember linked lists from probably from school or from reading about them on the internet, the idea is that you have data that points to where the next bit of data is. And you store this in your memory, and you can have essentially an infinite data structure and store a bunch of stuff that way. With a blockchain, it's uh, I think in the olden days, back when computer science was a real science, they called them hash lists. Blockchains were, a blockchain is basically a list that, where you have data and you also have a hash that completely, um, basically holds a pointer to your previous data point, to your previous block. So each block contains a hash of the entire blockchain that preceded it. And the cool thing about that is that it's immutable. Once something is on the blockchain, it stays on the blockchain forever. And that's a good thing, supposedly. It's, it's supposed to be really good for a lot of things. I'm, I'm not sure anyone has really found a practical use case for it yet. And I'm not going to be tell, talking about practical uses here. Here we're exploring ideas and having some fun. So Redux is also an immutable data store sort of thing. The idea with Redux is that you have some state, and you trigger an action, and that action makes a completely new copy of your state and add, add some changes. So if you look at this, it looks pretty similar to what we had with the blockchain sketch. You have these blocks where, that are connected to each other with arrows that say, hey, 
this thing is completely the same as the previous thing, but it has some changes. Now, why is this immutability thing so great? Why would you even want to have immutable data structures? Because obviously you have to make a change to change anything. But with immutability, the idea is that you, your data or your apps in general become easier to debug. There, you can do time travel debugging where you can kind of travel around your app based on how the user was using it, and they're easier to think about, and it's easier to distribute. One of the main tenets of functional programming is that you can make these packets of computation, distribute them about around a bunch of different computers, put them back together, and you get a new result. And that's, uh, that starts sounding very similar to what, you, what uh, blockchain is all about. A blockchain is also a distributed data store that runs on many different computers and does things that nobody really knows what those things are yet, um, other than obviously stealing a lot of people's money. So I had this, this idea of creating Blockchain Redux. Blockchain Redux is a library that is, I'm still researching it. I, I wouldn't recommend using it for anything practical or for anything impractical but it's out there on NPM and I've been playing around with it. And the idea with, the blo with blockchain Redux is that it could make building, building things very easy. I built a chat app yesterday to, to try it out in about an hour from scratch. And most of my time went into learning material UI to figure out how to actually make it pretty because I wanted to, you know, I didn't want it to look like crap here in front of all of you. So, the idea is that you have something that's like Redux, and you, you behave the same way as you always would. You instantiate a store, you trigger actions, you write a reducer that tells you how one action maps to another and creates new state. But behind the scenes, all of this is actually building a blockchain that exists only for your app, shares it on the internet, makes it possible for other clients to also connect to this, and we'll, got, we'll get to that elephant in the room later. Um, so you have this transparent way of storing your data on the internet, distributing it to, your, to many different clients, and all you do is the same stuff you would always would. User clicks a button, they trigger an add message action, that add message gets saved to your local store, but it also gets automatically tra trans um, transferred to all the other clients that are on the network. And I'm going to show you how... Okay. This is a bit longer than I wanted it to be, but let's see. Uh, I have to go out of navigation to show you the demo. How do I do that? Exit. So if we go, I can show you the demo here. I have two browsers open, and I can't see my screen very well. So let's say I'm Swizzets, and the other client is called We Are Devs, and We Are Devs sa says hello. Sends, the me sends message, and it automatically should appear here, but it doesn't. <laughs> so if I refresh that, or if I refresh this as well, hmm, curious. So I was making fun of somebody on the internet today when they were doing a live demo and it didn't work. Uh, so, you know, schadenfreude. Let's see, I can say that. Now it please show up. Okay, uh, it doesn't work. But it worked last night, I promise. <laughs> uh, but essentially, I think something is wrong with the with my connection to fa uh, to the central storage. And yes, it's still central. Let's see, what is this saying? Anyway, I'm not going to debug this right now. But the idea is that. I built this very quickly, and it's supposed to transparently transfer everything to other clients, and you should be able to connect to it. And it now stopped working because, um, yeah, you know, things happen. The, these, I, I did say this was still research. I'm still working on it. I'm figuring it out. I'm here to present the idea, and maybe you can tell me if you think it's useful. But the goal is that you should be able to do something like this if you if you just follow the same sort of, um, you use the same sort of code that you're already used to for managing your state in your web app. You create a store, in this case I call it a blockchain, 
And then you add something called the Firebase middleware, which we're going to talk about later. Then if you, want to if you want to subscribe to changes on the blockchain, you create, uh, you add a callback into your subscriber listeners, force an update. And that, it's, uh, that basically ties your React component to the blockchain. And whenever, you, whenever the blockchain changes, your React component is supposed to re-render. To actually send a message on this blockchain, in this case, it's a message because I built a chat app, you dispatch an action sim the same way as you do on Redux, and you add some data to it, and you have a re These two are not synced. Um, and then you have a reducer that tells you, oh, I cop, oh, okay. So one note, uh, make sure you don't copy paste the same slide twice with a different title. Um, so the reducer, again, for those of you familiar with, with Redux, what it does is for every time an action happens, in this case, add message, it updates your state by making a new copy of the state and adding the new message. And that's it. The, Redux, the blockchain Redux library is supposed to take care of everything else. You do this every time you dispatch a new change on your reducer, it updates everything. Um, it sends the message around, and that's, that's the general idea. The, what, I wanna, what I wanna build with this in the future is to have different middlewares that can work in different ways, because right now, Right now, the way this works is that you have multiple browsers that act as clients, and then you have this Firebase thing in the middle, which is a really convenient way to test out the principles of a library that's supposed to communicate between different browsers. But I will admit it's not actually what everything that the blockchain is supposed to be, because you have this Firebase that handles communication, and it's centralized, but the idea is that a browser triggers an action, updates its internal blockchain, sends that to Firebase, and then uh, all the other clients are listening on Firebase, and they get the new block and update their blockchain as well. That's also where the, uh, where the good stuff from the blockchain happens, where you verify that the block you received is correct, you verify that the entire, you can verify the entire chain. That's one of the things with blockchain is that you can always verify that you are in the correct state and that everyone agrees on what that state is. So right now I have a very simple, so yeah, let's, let's get to the elephants in the room. I, will, I mentioned Firebase a couple times and I mentioned that this is a pretty simple thing so far. So the problem with, the cur with my current implementation is that it's still centralized because it treats Firebase as like the source of ultimate truth. That's where the, re the real blockchain is stored. Um, it's stored in a blockchain format, but it's still on, on Firebase. Um, and whenever a new client connects, it pulls down the entire blockchain, verifies that it's correct, and accepts it. When it gets a new block, it verifies that that block is correct. But if the block is not correct, it just says, oh, whoa, this, this is really weird. I'm going to... I'm going to build consensus by just asking Firebase what Firebase has. Or essentially what, what it happens is every client always accepts the longest possible chain that is verifiable. So as long as, the, as, long as it assumes that the chain is correct, uh, or as long as the chain looks correct, it says, okay, this is, this is good. This is my blockchain. And the reason it's done that way is because WebRTC is really hard. Who here knows what WebRTC is? Awesome. Who here has tried to build something from scratch in WebRTC? A couple of you. So WebRTC is the next step I need to build for this stuff to work as an actual blockchain. With WebRTC, you can build a peer-to-peer -peer network directly between browsers because you can connect a browser directly to a separate browser without, in, without having a server in between, which means you can then um, it's primarily built for video and audio, but you can also send data. And my idea is to use that data connection to transfer, block, uh, to transfer blocks. One caveat that I'm still trying to figure out is that WebRTC still needs a signaling server. So a signaling server would essentially be doing service discovery. Now let's say you have a new 
a new client that wants to connect to your blockchain, it would need to go somewhere to say, hey, I am a new client, tell me where the other clients are. And that part is almost impossible to make distributable, but I'm gonna try to figure it out. Um, but with WebRTC, we could move away from the model of having, having it connect to Firebase and having everything stored centrally on Firebase because you could have, we already have blockchain copies in every client that's uh, connected to, to our blockchain. So all of those could then just communicate directly. You can build peer-to-peer -peer connections between two nodes and with some trickery, you could eventually, you could eventually get to like a, um, a mesh network of your different clients that are all communicating via this blockchain that is built specifically just for your app. It's not a Bitcoin blockchain, it's not Ethereum or anything like that. You're building it just for your state. And it would, it would live somewhere in this network, similarly to how the Bitcoin blockchain does. And the... Um, and the goal is that this would be completely transparent to you as a developer. If you know how to build a web app, you should be able to build a blockchain-backed web app that doesn't require special tools, doesn't require any special knowledge. It just kind of works transparently. You, you use everything the same way you always do, and it builds this mesh network. Now, there are some caveats to building apps like this, which I think could prevent it from ever being actually useful in practice because one of the problems is, what if your website isn't as popular as something like google.com or facebook.com? What if everybody disconnects and you suddenly don't have anybody connected to your website? With the blockchain model, that means that your blockchain vanishes. And when users come back next time, there's no more state, which is not great. Uh, so I think something like uh, you would, I guess you would have to do, do it similar way to old school torrent networks where you always had some nodes running and you just made sure that instead of running a server, you would always keep a browser open somewhere in your office to keep your app from, that, to keep your app from losing state. Uh, another one is that consensus actually turns out to be pretty hard. I don't think that in a real world application you would be able to just say, hey, whatever the longest valid blockchain is, I'm just gonna accept that as the real state. You would have to do some logic to say, okay, I'm gonna ask at least five different clients or some sort of consensus algorithm, which I know exists because Bitcoin is alive. Um, and hopefully your app would never grow to the point where Bitcoin is right now, where it takes 20 minutes to mine a new block or even longer. Uh, you can, there's different ways of solving that. I don't actually know all of them, but you do, I guess you, would ha you could eventually run into problems of just, if you have to propagate this network to everybody, if you have to propagate this state to everybody in your network, it becomes difficult to make sure that this happens in a timely fashion, especially if you consider how long delays can be between having clients that are in the US, clients that are in, I don't know, India or in Germany. If they all have to communicate and your state is only propagating through uh, through a mesh network, you'll never, you probably will never know that everybody who is actually connected to your website is seeing the same state because it needs to propagate through all the nodes, uh, which is something we've solved pretty much for the client server model, but I don't think it's solved yet for the client client model. That's going to be an interesting challenge to solve. And, I'll, and another one is how do you handle something being a progressive web app where somebody you should be able to. I mean, it's 2018, our websites or web apps should be usable offline, but if you're storing all of your state online, then what do you do? What happens when somebody is offline for two hours, keeps using your app, adds a bunch of new blocks to the chain, then connects and, somebody, and the external network says, oh, hey, there are actually 5,000 different blocks that were added before you added your blocks. What do you want to do with this? So these are all problems that I haven't solved yet. And there are problems that kind of make me question whether this is ever going to be practically useful or whether it could solve any real problems. But my idea was that I would build something that's cool and that would work better than my demo did before. Um, and I just want, I basically wanted to, the idea was I don't know what the blockchain is gonna bring. I don't know if it's the next big innovation in tech or in the I2 industry or any of that. 
But I do know that a lot of people are very excited about it, so I wanted to give them tools to be able to build blockchains and build apps on the blockchain without needing to have a lot of super specialized knowledge. And uh, I'm hoping you have questions for me, but this is my website, you can go check me out. And if anyone here is looking for some React training that works better than my chat app example, hit me up. Hmm? Voila. Yeah. Thank you. We, have, we do actually do have some questions for you. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, why don't you believe in investing in cryptocurrencies? Why don't I believe in investing in cryptocurrencies? Well, I think it's a bubble. And as most Ponzi schemes, it suffers from the problem of needing the next fool. You'll see that a lot of people who have money in crypto spend most of their time talking about how great crypto is and how amazing blockchains are, and not a lot of time of, hey, you can make this useful thing. Or, I mean, sure, we have crypto kittens, that's amazing. But, you know, there's, you'll see that there's a lot of hype and a lot of hype creation, but not a lot of practical use cases. I mean, I don't need a currency where it takes me 20 minutes to pay someone. I can do that already with a credit card and it takes a second. So, I don't know. We'll see. It, it might be big, but I don't know. I just think that right now it's bubbly. It's a, it's a valid, valid platform to explore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like the web was in 95. Yeah, exactly what you were saying. Which brings us back. Um, I don't, the second question here is, what problem do you solve by merging these two technologies? I'm assuming they're referring to in your presentation. Yes. So, the problem I solved by merging these two technologies was... I wanted to build apps on the blockchain and it seemed really hard to learn whatever the language is for Ethereum. And I asked around on the internet, hey, how do I start a new blockchain? How do I experiment with this? And everyone was just like, oh, you go to GitHub, you, you, um, you fork somebody's cryptocurrency and you add your own stuff. And I'm like, but I don't want to make a cryptocurrency. I want to use this to manage state because you told me this was useful for more than just cryptocurrencies. So, I didn't get a really good answer for that, so I tr started making this. And as I learned last night, actually, the most useful thing is that it makes it very easy to build apps without worrying about how to propagate state to other clients, because you just do your normal Redux stuff and the library takes care of the rest. Which is a good introduction to the next question. <laughs> so the bigger the application state is, the longer it will take new clients to... Will it take longer for new so, clients to display it? Uh, yes and no. It depends on... I'm trying to make it very pluggable. So if you, use, if you use the kind of model that Bitcoin uses, where every subsequent block is harder to create, then yes, the bigger your state becomes, the, hard, the longer it will take to make changes. But I'm using very simple non-cryptographic hashes, so that part is actually pretty fast. Where it can get problematic is on your first load, where you have to download the entire blockchain. Because in my examples, it's very easy. You're downloading something that has, I don't know, 100 JSON nodes. Simple. But what if you're trying to save like an entire Bitcoin blockchain on your computer, it's, or actually in your browser memory, it's probably going to crash your computer. So I think I need to figure out some ways to be able to have just chunk, the latest chunk of your blockchain or something like that to solve that. So actually, probably a follow-up question would be, what will happen yes. if the blockchain gets too uh, big? Yeah, so if the blockchain gets too big, you, you have the problem of you can't keep it in your memory anymore practically. So I think Ethereum has solved that. I haven't explored it yet, but there's algorithms you can use to say, okay, I know that this hash is correct and that all, everything before it was valid, so I'm going to decide that for my local state, this is the new root node. And I'm just going to assume that everything before that was correct and essentially build a sub-chain that's smaller. <laughs> Actually, this question probably <laughs> follows up. What yeah. about performance for a remote distributed store compared to a local store? Well, obviously, a local store is, always, is pretty much always going to be faster than whatever you're distributing. The problem with distributed stores is that you have latency. So you can build enthusiastic updates where you re-render your, your app and you say, OK, I'm assuming that this is going to get saved eventually and you hope for the best. And that's actually how a lot of modern web apps are already built, where you assume that whatever you're doing will eventually get 
push to your REST API and you just update your uh, UI for the client and hope for the best. Well, ask some harder questions. Come on, let's yeah. go. Come on, guys. Do you have a library package now to simply uh, use? Yes, you can go to NPM and look for blockchain Redux. It's not going to be the blockchain, but it's going to use this Firebase implementation. And I'm currently working on figuring out the WebRTC impl implementation. But you can do NPM install blockchain Redux and start playing around with it. So does each client have the whole blockchain? Yeah, exactly. Different. Each client has the entire blockchain. And right now where the consensus algorithm is just whatever is the longest chain in existence is the blockchain, you need at least one client connected. Or in the case of the, if you use the Firebase middleware, which is the only one that currently exists, it's all, it's all stored in Firebase. So as soon as you connect, you're initialized, you fetch the whole thing, and you don't need any other clients. But eventually you will need at least whatever you decide your consensus is, requires. There's kind of a second part to that question. So yeah. um, could many browsers be connected and would you still lose the state? Yeah, so if you make sure that, let's say that you decide I need at least three clients to agree on what the blockchain is. If you have at least three people connected to your service, then it stays in existence. As soon as you start going below three, you start losing state, or at least you're not sure anymore that that is the, the actual state. What, <laughs> what if you were to use Ethereum a smart contract? Could you save the state there? Yes, you could use an Ethereum smart contract to save the state there. But the problem with Ethereum is that it's very cryptocurrency, and I'm not sure how costly that would get. Because I think you have to use fake slash real money for Ethereum. So it's Excella. Using blockchain for shared UI state on the web. Thank you very much. That was great. Thank you. Great.